So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ningye, and uh, today I will present my master's thesis, applying a uh, lens-free holograph Im imaging to droplet-based microfluidic observation. I will focus on my main findings uh, instead of all the details, which can be read in the thesis paper. So first, let's start by introducing the background and the related work of my thesis. Based microfluidic system can manipulate nanoliter volume of uh, liquids in a precise and uh, reliable manner. It has many applications in medicine, pharmacy, and biology. One example is drug, drug discovery, which requires a large number of uh, experiments and data. With traditional lab operations, it can lead to large sample consumption and high cost of time and labor. Droplet microfluidics is a promising solution to this problem. It offers the benefits of low sample or reagent consumption and enable parallelization and high throughput uh, experimentation. For example, compared to the typical microliter plate assays, droplet microfluidics can use over 1,000 folder smaller assay volume and has around 500 times higher throughput. While the droplet uh, microfluidics enable parallel, parallel and high throughput experimentation, microscopy systems are required to monitor the events in droplets. Lens-based bright field microscopy is typically used, but this method limits the field of view of the event that can be assayed in the droplets. Therefore, droplet microfluidics assay are typically limited to, uh, to the imaging of either fast-moving droplets or of many droplets in the static condition, as shown in those two pictures. This extremely limits the range of the experiment that can be performed on those platforms. The limited field of view can be alleviated by sequential, sque uh, uh, sequential screening of the area of interest, but this prevents real-time monitoring of the droplet events. Thus, there is a clear need for alternative microscopy method to be integrated with large-scale droplet microfluidic system. Lens uh, microscopy is a promising technique to meet this need. Extensive study has shown that it offers the benefits of large field of view and real-time monitoring. Besides, this platform is typically compact and low cost because it avoids using a lens between the light source and the sample. The primary goal of my thesis is to explore the potential of lens-free imaging platform for observing droplet microfluidics. The platform has three main objects. First, it should provide a large field of view compared to the lens-based microscopy. Second, the image quality should be comparable to the lens-based microscope. Third, the processing time of the platform should be as fast as possible to enable nearly real-time imaging. Now, let's have a quick look at the basic theory of the 2D lens-free imaging. The, this theory assumes that sample to be a thin la layer of materials and it will require two steps. The first step is hologram acquisition, as shown in the top figure. The sample is illuminated by a coherent light source generating an interference pattern between the incident wave and the scatter wave. The pattern is called hologram and captures both amplitude and phase information of the sample. Thus, in the second step, we can use this hologram to reconstruct the original representation of the sample with numeric reconstruction. The 2D lens-free imaging has found its success in various applications, but it is still facing two challenges when, when imaging large and complex objects. The first one is lateral resolution, which describes the ability to resolve the details of the object. The second is the actual resolution, which describes the ability to distinguish the direction. Several state-of-the-art techniques are proposed to tackle those two challenges. The pixel super resolution-based method improves the lateral resolution by taking multiple measurements of the hologram. The first PSR technique uh, by Bishara collects a series of holograms by shifting the light aperture. They achieve 0.6 micrometer lateral resolution 
with a field of view of 24 square millimeters. Other techniques take multiple, multiple measurement using different wavelengths emulation or different sample to sensor distance. They also achieve some pixel resolution with even less measurement. The 3D tomography method improves the axial resolution with the similar strategy. The first work by X-Men records multiple holograms at different emulation angles, and those holograms are brought back project to compute the tomogram of the sample. They achieve a large, uh, large volume of around 50 cubic millimeters on a chip and an, and an actual resolution of 3 micrometers. However, these systems are not widely used in the real-world application because of the complex setup and the long time for data acquisition. In contrast to those physics-driven techniques, the data-driven deep learning model has demonstrated fast and robust reconstruction performance. The deep learning approach uh, used label image data to train, a neural net to, uh, to train a convolutionary neural network for hologram reconstruction. Typically, the high quality label images are used as the ground truth. We can obtain the ground truth images by uh, from no or by using physics-based uh, reconstruction method. The network parameters are adjusted to minimize the user-defined error between the net, uh, network output and the ground truth images. After the training, the reconstruction task can be performed with a single pass through the network. This typically, this typically uh, takes less than a second, which enable real-time imaging. The deep learning models can also clean the unwanted interference artifacts caused by the coherence or the particles that are outside of the sample plane. In my thesis, both numeric and uh, deep learning based reconstruction method will be investigated for imaging droplet microfluidics. So that was it uh, for the introduction. Uh, now I will discuss the work related to the numeric reconstruction. Uh, since there is no available lens-free imaging platform in the lab, we built our own setup from scratch based on an open source project. A 3D printing house is housing is used to implement the schematic of the lens-free imaging. A Raspberry Pi computer uh, controls the light source and records the hologram via the CMOS detector. The samples that we used for uh, for observation are two type two types of the microfluidic chips, uh, cell culture and droplet generation. They have uh, different structures. The cell culture chip has one wide channel uh, divided by three subchannels by two sequence of pilers. The shape and the size of the pilers can vary. The droplet generation chip has a ring-like structure of radiant channel. The water is pushed in the ring center and driven out to the channel exit, where the water meets the oil and formulates. The workflow of the experiment is as follows. First, we've used the, uh, we use both lens-free platform and optical microscope to tr and try to capture the same area of the sample as much as possible. However, this approach cannot guarantee a strict pixel-to-pixel -pixel mapping dataset. This is very important to keep in mind because it will impact our choices for evaluation matrix and the deep learning models, which we'll, we will discuss later. Then we use the images from the optical microscope as the ground truth. The raw holograms from the lens-free platform were translated to a more powerful PC. They are processed by the numeric reconstruction. Finally, we evaluate the reconstruction performance by calculating matrix between the reconstruct images and ground truth images. To evaluate the reconstruction performance, we reported four matrix in the thesis. Pixel value based matrix such as mean square error and, P and the peaks uh, signal to noise ratio are simple to compute, but they are poorly correlated to the human visual system. Moreover, images with the same 
MSC values does not mean that they contain the same distortion or noise. The figure here is a good example of two exam uh, of the two images with the same MSC value, but contains two different modifications to the original images. One is adding noise, and another one is just adding a constant. Instead, we will focus on the percept perceptional-based matrix. SSIM stands for Structure Similarity Index Matrix. Measures the similarity between images by comparing their luminance, contrast, and structure difference. The CWSSIM is an index which compares the images using complex wavelet transform. It is more robust against the issue of uh, image scaling, displacement, and rotation. As I said, the, hologram and the, ground the, the holograms and the ground truth images that we acquired before are unpaired. Therefore, we believe that the complex wave SSIM is more accurate matrix. So now let's move on the result of the numeric reconstruction. We provide three examples of the cell culture samples and the droplet generation samples are shown. In each, in each example, raw holograms reconstruct images and the ground truth images are shown. Perceptionally, the reconstruction result for the cell culture sample seems to be better than the droplet generation samples. However, we also notice that in the reconstruct, uh, the reconstruct images contain some unwanted interference artifacts and out-of-focus noise. So now let's check if the new matrix value support our visual perception. The mean value of the perceptional matrix between the reconstruction and the ground truth images are computed. We also compute the matrix between the hologram and the ground truth as a reference. For SSIM, we do see its increase from the hologram to reconstruction, and the increase of the cell culture sample is more than the increase of the droplet generation sample, which is consistent with our perceptional result. However, for CWSSIM, there is no obvious increase. This is because that the unwanted artifact and the noise bring down the CWSSIM values. Next, I compare the reconstruction result of different object size. I compare two with the same pillar uh, type, but with different size. From the image, it seems that the reconstruction uh, for the large pillar is worse than the smaller ones. For SSIM, the increase of the larger pillars is also less than the increase of the smaller pillars. For CWSSIM uh, SSIM values, the smaller pillars has a lower value than the larger one because the image actually contains more unwanted uh, artifacts. Therefore, it's, it is still bringing down the CWSSIM SSIM values. After seeing the limitation with the numeric reconstruction, we decided to use deep learning approach to improve the reconstruct, reconstruction quality. The data set were collected based on the work of the numeric reconstruction. Due to the limit number of available samples in the lab, the data set has a small size of 92 records. Each record consists of a hologram, its corresponding numeric reconstruction, and ground truth images. On the right side, we show an example for each type of the data record. More than half of the data record are the droplet generation microfluidic chips because they are the main targets in this, in this work. The cell culture and object glass samples are also included because they provide useful information on how to deal with unwanted artifacts and out-of-focus noise. The goal of the model is to improve the ink reconstruction uh, quality. This can be considered as an image-to-image -image translation task. In our case, we want to translate the image of the hologram or reconstruction to the corresponding ground truth images. Most of the image-to-image -image algorithm are based on UNET model. The training of this model is image data. Besides, the quality of the ground truth images determines the accuracy of the reconstruction result. As I stressed before, our data cannot meet these requirements. Therefore, 
the unit-based model are discarded. In the past, in the past years, several papers have used psychogenetic adversary networks, which is called psychogen, for hologram reconstruction. Psychogen has several interesting advantages. First, the training of the network does not require uh, paired data. Second, it can achieve good reconstruction results with less images, which reduces the difficulty of the data acquisition. Moreover, the model is robust against the displacement of the image system and the defocus, defocus effect. Therefore, we decided to use the psychogram for our task. So let's not, uh, now let's talk about how psychogram can translate image from one domain to another without the need for paired images. The psychogram has two generators and two discriminators. In this example, the task is to translate an image of horse to Libra. The first objective of the generator A to B is to make sure that the translate images looks like a Libra. This is achieved by training the generator and the discriminator adversarially. Therefore, the generator must learn how to make convincing images of Libra. But if we only use this objective, this will lead to a famous problem in training again, which is called mode collapse. It means that the generator will only generate the images that will fool the discriminator the best, discarding the context of the input images. Hence, the second object of the generator A to B is to make sure that the translate images the original. This is achieved by introducing a second generator B to A and the, the cycle consistency loss. The second uh, generator B to A learns to translate the images back to the original. The cycle consistent loss is calculated between the original and output images, uh, output images of the generator B to A. Both generators will be penalized for any difference between the original images and the psychotic images uh, processed by both generators. This ensures that the generator A to B does not completely discarding its input. Uh, the same process is done uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, we, uh, we train two networks to investigate, the rec uh, investigate their uh, reconstruction performance. The first network, Holo to Choose, aims to transfer images from hologram to the ground truth. The second network, Reconstruct to choose to transfer images from reconstruction to ground truth. Data, data augmentation was used to get some variation of the, of the training images. This prevents uh, overfitting and makes the mo networks more generalizable. Add-on optimizer were used to updating the weights. The loss function is a combination of the weighted MSE for adversary loss and MAE for the psycho consistent loss. During the training, the generator models were saved after each five input uh, of training. Ten data records that are not used for the training are used for the evaluation. The first thing I did is to come uh, after the training is to compare the overall performance of the reconstruct to choose networks perform better in both uh, perceptional matrix. This suggests that it is more difficult to narrow direct mapping between the hologram and ground truth images than the mapping between reconstruction and ground truth images. Therefore, I decided to continue with the reconstruct to choose network for experiments that followed. Next, we want to find out which input of model gave the best performance. During the training, we saved the generator models after every five inputs training, and we evaluate the performance on the test set. The figure on the top shows the perceptual matrix of different input model. We will use the CWSSIM matrix to select the best model since it is more accurate than the SSIM. The model at the input 10 has the highest value, but we did not select it. This is because in the beginning of the training, the network has not learned enough meaningful information and tends to generate images with random noise. 
This can be verified by checking the output images of the 10 inputs in model as shown on the bottom left. Hence, we prefer to select a model with a higher input number so that the network performance is more stable. Therefore, we choose a model with 30 inputs as the best model. Finally, we want to see how much improvement that the chosen best model can provide. On the left figure, we shown that some example of the hologram and their corresponding reconstruction images, network output images, and ground truth images. On the right, we show the perception re uh, perceptional matrix value for hologram, reconstruction, and network output images. Compared to the reconstructed images, the the reconstruction quality in both visual perception and the matrix values. The undesirable artifact and out-of-focus noise in the reconstruction images has been reduced by the network significantly, which results a 100% increase for the CW SSM, SSIM values. However, we also notice that the network introduced two issues to the output, output images. First, the network generates generates some non-existing dots in the output images. Second, the reconstruction quality for the microfluidic channel wall is reduced. Those issues are very critical and needs to be alleviated in the further research. So now let's summarize the most important conclusion of my thesis work and what they imply. My thesis study two approach of applying lens-free images to droplet uh, microfluidics observation. The numeric reconstruction is good for imaging small objects, but not for objects with large and complex structure. This implies that one single hologram does not have sufficient information to reconstruct, to reconstruct large and complex objects numerically. The numeric reconstruction also generates unwanted artifact and out-of-focus noise. Then we tried to use deep learning approach to try to improve those issues. Two networks are trained respectively to transfer images from reconstruction and hologram to ground truth. And we found that the reconstruct to truth network performs better. It indicates that it is easier to find the mapping between the reconstruction and the group ground truth rather than the one between hologram and the ground truth. However, we also noticed that the network introducing critical imaging issues of non-first reconstruction of the microfluidic channel wall. We believe this is due to the small size of the training data. My thesis work demonstrates the hybrid, the hybrid uh, MERC and the deep learning reconstruction techniques has a good potential to achieve large field of view and real-time lens-free imaging. However, there are still some works before we can have a useful platform for droplet observation. First, we would like to upgrade our current, optics, uh, our current optical setup. By optimizing the me mechanical design, we can achieve a, larger, a large field of view. A hybrid optical and uh, holographic image platform is recommended so that the data acquisition process can be much more efficient. Our work also suggests that the quality of the hologram is crucial to the reconstruction result. Therefore, we suggest to use a laser diode as a light source, because since it can provide a better spatial resolution. Second, second, a major weakness of this thesis work is that we did, we did not collect droplet image data for training the network. As a result, our current network model cannot pro process the images that containing droplets. Therefore, the droplet datasets needs to, be, needs to be collected for future improvement. Finally, we, if we are satisfied with the reconstruction quality, we can implement them as a video processing module. GPU programming and FPGA implementation can be considered to be enable the real-time processing. In the end, we managed to record some of the uh, some videos using our current lens-free image platform uh, image setup and the optical microscope during the droplet uh, generation. As you can see, the droplets are quite already recognizable in those holograms, which is a good sign 
for applying lens free imaging for large scale droplet microfluidic system. So thanks for your uh, for your attention. So now it's time for me to answer some of the questions. Uh, so feel free to ask. Them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Linye. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I can hear you. So I would suggest then that uh, the two assessors, who are uh, Professor Lamertin and uh, Professor Houdemé, ask you some questions. And I think, uh, Yeroun, if you don't mind, perhaps we would start with you. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, JV. <coughs> Linia, thanks a lot for uh, your nice presentation. I have, uh, uh, yeah, well, it's not my, my, my field of expertise, so I have some questions. Some of the questions might uh, switch on the camera, maybe that's better share video good some of the questions might be maybe uh, stupid questions but anyway that's easy then for you to answer so in in your motivation uh, you talk about field of view and that um, that in the regular um, approach the field of view is is, is not sufficient mm -hmm. can you motivate um, why that is because if I collect droplets here on the left side to collect droplets in the recipient, I can also follow up those droplets with the, with the regular microscope. Why would your uh, approach uh, be better? Okay, thanks for your question. Um, so the idea is that uh, with the current, uh, with the limited field of view, uh, as I uh, as we saw, this, saw those uh, example here, um, uh, right now uh, the 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 use case is either like they are observing the job, like the fast moving job. It's in a static, uh, in a static mode like this. Um, but uh, but those those two um, basically image strategy cannot be easily integrated uh, in in uh, in a one droplet uh, microfluidic uh, system. Like they, they cannot be very close to each other, right? So that's why uh, the and uh, we because we want to have a full control of the full droplet microfluidic system. So and uh, if we just uh, like let's say uh, we just use two lens, uh, two camera to observe like the two uh, um, the two region of the interest like at the same time. But there's gonna be some uh, like, but we don't know what is like uh, the the process that is between them. So it's uh, for having a large field of view. It's uh, it's uh, it's more for us to know more information of the process that is going on in the droplet microfluidics, and it allows us have. It also can enable like the, the automatic uh, control of the uh, droplet microfluidic system. I hope that is uh, a, a good move. Uh, that's uh, that is clear to you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not, not really convinced. Things, but I'm not really, yeah, it's not really clear. Because what, what is the real added value? Can you give me a practical example, for instance? Uh, imagine that I want to encapsulate cells in my droplets. I mm -hmm. add something to my cells that I want to see my cells uh, changing. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. You say that with your uh, holographic approach, you will have a larger field of view, so you can follow up more pro more of the cells. Yes, but at what cost does that come? Uh, uh, the probably cost the uh, low, probably the, the the analysis of your images is is maybe uh, more time consuming, computationally speaking. Uh, yes, or, there are like two, like this kind of a lar the large field of view uh, come at the cost of the two things. The first thing is definitely the image reconstruction quality, because uh, and uh, because the hologram requires uh, requires the reconstruction, and I w as we as we uh, as I uh, investigate the reconstruction quality, it normally uh, it if uh, it's not as uh, not as good as the optical microscope, because eventually we are using the opti optical microscope as a ground truth. Uh, and another thing definitely come at the cost of the speed, because uh, the, uh, the on the one hand the the state uh, the state of the art the the lens imaging like they uh, they use 
they always requires multiple measurements to 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 so that you can achieve a very high quality images, uh, and that that's why we actually uh, want uh, the deep learning camera approach because it provides a it provides a way that. Uh, to facilitate so that we learn all the information like the, the, the reconstruction and the relationship beforehand and we use the deep learning model to process so that's that's the cost of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the large field of view yeah. uh, a question about the, the the time to process the images if I want to sort cells uh, and I want to look at it with this uh, lens free holographic microscopy how fast or at what uh, frequency can I sort cells? Can I process actually the images and then uh, do the sorting action? Do you have an idea? Uh, that? That's that's, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. So, so right now, because since our our thesis work is uh, is couldn't uh, like is still like offline observation. But based on the um, from based on the uh, uh, literature that we have looking, so typically like the the reconstruction speed uh, with deep learning model is taking less than a second. So uh, so I I would say yeah it's the speed is pretty pretty uh, slow like I think it's between um, between t uh, ten or like between ten to uh, thirty. Frame per second, something like that. I will say. Yeah. Okay. And then on, on one of your slides, you you say, look, okay, my assumption is that um, that I have a flat surface actually, yeah, a flat a flat yes, uh, this one. here. Yeah, uh, the thin sample is the assumption. That's what you mentioned. Yeah. The position of your cell, uh, in this case, the the green sample, huh? um, whether it's on top of the channel or at the bottom of the channel, to what extent will that influence your results? The height uh, positioning. Uh, the height position. So, so actually, uh, in the height position, this sample, like for for lens free imaging, if you want to achieve a large field of view, this sample should be very close to the uh, image sensor. So maybe this one is a good like uh, this. Those two figures are a good example. So it's like the distance between the sample and the image sensor is uh, compared to the distance between the uh, uh, like the light source to the sample is like uh, very they are like uh, much bigger like let's say 10 times or 20 times bigger than the uh, the actual uh, uh, than, than the actual uh, than the, this distance to uh, sensors uh, distance because if you move it up like if you up you, you will you will end up with uh, less uh, you will end up with uh, um, more uh, more mag uh, more improve of the uh, magnification, um, but you will have a, like a smaller uh, uh, field of view of the samples. Mm -hmm. And and so you you if if I look at the construction of a microfluidic device, uh, so on the top of your channel you have your uh, detector. Um, mm -hmm. Is that embedded in the PDMS, or that's on top of the PDMS and measures through the PDMS? Uh, you mean the detector, the detector, or yes, or uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is that is um, in my case is still under, just under the uh, under the they are not integrated integrate to each other, but they are placing like very close. So we are using some kind of like shelf structure so that you can actually uh, you actually uh, you can actually change the position like to adjust the the uh, the quality the image quality. Okay, and another question is uh, so you've you've made nice progress uh, building the setup, uh, doing the the mathematical algorithms and so on, uh, but, but what would be the best, uh, or do, can you give me an indication? If you look at the literature, what would mm -hmm. be the best reconstruction possible? Uh, what is your final aim? Is it really this uh, value of one that you have in all your bar graphs, or is it 0.85? Or what, what? Can, can you give me an indication on that? 
Uh, you mean for the reconstruction result, right? Like yes. this graph. Yes. These bars, for instance, yeah, these bar graphs, for instance, yeah. Yeah. Uh, situation is that uh, we actually, the image quality, as I said, the, the, the object is like the image quality is one of the is one of the objects of our of our uh, uh, of our system. The, the the large field of view and the, and the real time imaging are also very quite important. So, but I would say if uh, the image quality, I would say and the, for the like the similarity uh, structure similarity index, I think uh, from the other literature uh, as I see, I mean definitely like a value of. Uh, above like uh, 0 0.95 is uh, is very preferable like for to achieve like very close uh, very close to image quality to the uh, optical microscope yeah. okay yeah and 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 that's okay that's where you want to go uh, what, what is according to you that the major uh, issue that you don't reach that uh, I heard you mentioning the number of samples for the training uh, but, but your algorithm yeah. is that sufficient, or do you need to f do further improvements on your algorithm as well? Yeah. So actually, I want to mention like few things about how to, for for the deep learning algorithm part. Uh, so first thing, of course, the the major issue is definitely the data records is too still too small. But but that is a that is uh, yeah that's normally like the deep learning um, that is the most common problem for the deep learning because uh, normally if uh, for uh, from the Literature of the cyclogram, like the norm, the, the 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 cyclogram, normally they typically needs to use at least like we are talking about the training images of or over one thousand or or like even um, uh, even like ten thousand something like that, and they trained for a really long uh, for a long period of the end um, and also that is uh, one major issues. And another one which I uh, which I need to mention that is like we need to further improve the network uh, uh, network uh, setup because here they are still using the MSE and the MAE MAE as a loss function, which I mentioned before is actually not good for the human visual system. It's not it's just like energy measurement. So uh, another thing we can do is to customize this loss function that so that it's used the uh, the uh, the perception matrix, so that it so that such that the uh, the that the reconstruction performance is more you know like it's more uh, su uh, suitable for our human vision instead of like just uh, the pixel value difference. So that's the two things that I uh, um, the uh, the uh, the object for. Uh, for this uh, for for this uh, models. Yeah. Okay, I see. Then a last question, maybe. Um, what is on your image, or the structure that you're imaging? Uh, the complexity of that. To what extent is that important for your training of your deep learning? Uh, you can, you uh, can have yes. an image with a few pillars, but you can have an image with many pillars of different sizes and so on. To what extent? Is that information content, uh, yeah, helping you forward, and and yeah, maybe is is is, is requesting less uh, different images uh, if you if you put a lot of information on one image. Uh, that's one. Uh, that's one of the actually the fan, the finding of the of the our thesis. We discovered that uh, uh, the the object that was uh, one thing is that that they are. Very, uh, they're very lar large. That's one, uh, that's one characters, and then another one is that they have very uh, complex structure, like we see here with uh, this uh, ring-like droplet generation. Because, the, but that is because the, the because of the uh, nature of the uh, diffraction, because you have more complex or very structure that they are close to each other. The quality of the hologram you see here is getting worse, so that so it's more difficult to um, to uh, to reconstruct them um, with like with more with with more details. So um, while so for this is that uh, we from the literature we see that the one if the you basically you need to acquire more informations 
either from from like multiple measurements or you use a, you need to use a deep learning model try to use the experience that you learn from the disk uh, uh, from the deep learning model to reconstruct it. so yeah so it is if you're, you're mo if the imaging uh, if the imaging um, structure the, the sample structure is more complex and difficult then yeah it, the difficulty to reconstruction is also going to going up yeah that's for sure thank you very much Okay, thank you, Aiden. I think then it's my turn to ask some questions. And it uh, yes. heavy. <laughs> thank yes. you, yes. thank you. Sorry, uh, I was muting myself. No, no problem, no problem. Uh, already many questions have been also linear. Also, thank you very much for this very nice presentation. This nice work. Um, um, yeah, as a computer vision scientist, I have a few questions on, on why certain things are chosen. So that's that's the things okay. I, I would like to, to focus on. Um, first, yeah, your discussion about field of view, uh, you already argumented why you want a big field of view. That's OK. Uh, but I'm not totally convinced why a lens-free solution will give a bigger field of view than a solution with a lens. With a lens, you can take images from 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 yeah, like in a, like in an, in a camera, you can take images from uh, from meters wide and converge that to the the optical sensor, which is a few millimeters or centimeters big. While in lens-free images, you're always constrained by the size of the of the sensor. Isn't that true? Mm. Uh, yes, actually, I would agree the last part, like uh, uh, the uh, the size of the sensor is definitely, yeah, you can always increase them to achieve larger field of view. Uh, and also, uh, but this, uh, I think this has something to do with, uh, uh, with cost effective, uh, I would say. Uh, because if you, I think, I think this, uh, the idea of you, one of the uh, advantage of the lens-free imaging is that they are very compact and also uh, uh, they are also very compact and cost-effective, and uh, and you you can definitely yeah you can increase the uh, increase the lens and the camera size as much as you want, but I think uh, there's certain uh, like limitation that. Um, uh, that you can reach them, especially consider what kind of like uh, say like the camera sensors and the lens that we can manufacture. Uh, so I, I I agree that uh, yeah I mean you can definitely do that, but uh, that counts. I think that's like a uh, price. Uh, yeah, I was yeah indeed. If you want to monitor on uh, so many well plates, I, I can imagine that it's multiple centimeters in size, then you need uh, optical sensors that are that large or multiple yeah. of them. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. yeah. nevertheless, uh, it, it, it looks to give nice images. Now that we are visiting slide 18, um, I'm uh, delighted to, to shed your light on this. Uh, actually, when I observe these figures here in the slide, I would say that actually your hologram contains more detail than your reconstruction. For instance, for the on the top row, you can clearly see the edge of the thing that is visible, while in your reconstruction, it's it's blurry. Uh, therefore, I was very surprised that you say like no we, we tested two image to image translation uh, gans one from the hologram to the ground truth and one from a reconstruction to the ground truth and you actually chose to first do a metric reconstruction and and, and then only uh, do deep learning for that last step i think you've lost already a bit of detail by doing that reconstruction isn't that yeah yeah that's true actually because as i said the hologram contains like in theory, you can the hologram contains all the face and amplitude information, and uh, with more specific setup, you can you know use hologram to do like three D reconstruction. But the thing is, uh, in our case, the droplets 
you know, like droplet itself, uh, and the droplet microfluidics, they are like uh, it's like quite a, it's it's a quite thick sample. Like they have like two millimeters mm -hmm. of this thickness. So, but you don't want to. But you are only interested in the sample plane that you know has the pillar or has the. You don't want to have the details of like let's say some du some particle or dust like in like a, on the top or on the bottom yeah. of the uh, of the of the uh, of the chips, right? So that's why we use the reconstruction first. We we use the reconstruction to actually to let our, our focus to just focus on the uh, area that we are really interested. Like we already narrowed down it, like in a in a specific exo that exo range, and then we use the uh, deep learning to do for to 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 actually do uh, uh, to to further uh, reconstruction. But of course, uh, definitely we will remove some remove something. That's for sure. But of course, this is very delicate. So you need to be be really be really careful, like about uh, what you are trying to, which kind of uh, which sample plane that you need to uh, you you are we are trying to look at. So actually, yeah. uh, because doing this reconstruction, if I actually there are a lot of like uh, parameter tuning before we actually get the reconstruction images. So that's something actually also is a good interest interesting because. Uh, this some further kind of like a very accurate mechanical uh, uh, setup, so that we can have a like a very good idea of like which kind of uh, a sample plane that we are actually looking at. Okay, so, sorry, sorry to to budge in. Eh? Maybe Ton, if you could ask just one more question, if you still have some, because I think we should start wrapping up. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, no, yeah. The, the main concern is about the amount of training examples uh, so here the 92 data records is is way too few to train yes. a, a very good model even if it doesn't contain any droplets yet and you want it to make it to to monitor droplets uh, so uh, i think to to draw final conclusions the first thing is a larger uh, uh, data collection program um, that's that's for sure that was my main main concern here but the methodology seems seems okay although if you're only interested in droplets yeah then you can think of if it's that in in that that important that you uh, reconstruct your entire image if you only want to to detect droplets or detect properties of droplets yeah then you can also think of other deep learning methods that directly work on the hologram and do not try to reconstruct your entire image isn't it uh, yes that's uh, that's a good that's a very good point uh, actually as you uh, because in deep learning actually we are trying to looking for some like uh, uh, like people's work on doing the holographic imaging but the pro, uh, like we because we're thinking about yeah we have a very small data sets maybe we should try with uh, you know like some transfer learning methods or uh, like models that we can use for do it but uh, but unfortunately doing our uh, uh, like research uh, it seems like no one was really willing to share those things so that's why we have to train it from scratch and uh, and uh, yeah so that's a kind of a pity of this uh, thesis work I would say. Yeah, that's nothing you can do anything about, eh? of course. No, thank you, uh, Chevy. This uh, con uh, concludes my asking of questions. OK, thank you. Thank you, Ton. Uh, so maybe what I do is I start the breakout rooms. Uh, Ligné, you can just stay here, and we'll be back in a, in a second, OK? OK, thanks. Okay.